What we need to talk about today is just some parts of the protus. Yesterday we talked about some general characteristics. We talked about a few of the structures within them and what they do. But today we're going to look at some actual um, drawings of protus and label them a little more um, specifically here. Again, this is obviously an amoeba okay, with its irregular shape. You can see in this video, you can just see again another video of it moving. You can see these um, pseudopods extending, kind of oozing forward. It doesn't move very quickly, but it, it does move. You can see the cytoplasm within it. It's called cytoplasmic streaming as it moves. And that's, you can see the back part over here is, is withdrawing in. The other parts are moving forward. So that's how amoebas move. So that's an amoeba. And the parts of an amoeba, remember, all of these are single cell organisms. So this is one cell. So what do you think A, we talked about this yesterday, what do you think A is showing? Yeah, that's a vacuole. Okay. Again, this was probably where there was some food ingested earlier. That's <laughs> probably in the process of being digested by enzymes produced by the amoeba. What do you think B is? What do you think all this is? Cytoplasm. Yeah, that's cytoplasm. Sure you are. And how about these? How about these? <coughs> yeah. Jack, pseudopods? Those are the pseudopods, correct. And then we have also the contractile vacuole. Now you're going to see in the um, paramecium and in the ublina, it looks different. In the amoeba, it's just a sort of circular vacuole. Like yeah, you don't have it um, with a line, but just draw it in there. Well, so it's like a vacuole? Yeah, there's many vacuoles. Like this is another food vacuole. So every time the amoeba is ingesting food, it forms a new food vacuole. So there would be many of them. Yeah, what did we say yesterday about the contractile vacuole? It's an adaptation for <coughs> living in fresh water. What, so what does it do so first? Oh, and it gets bigger truck. Well, yeah, yeah, it pumps out excess water. Because remember, these are freshwater aquatic organisms. So water is constantly moving into them through osmosis. So if they didn't get rid of some of that water, they would swell up. Okay? So they have these contractile vacuoles which take in water and pump it out to maintain the right balance of water. Okay? Just looking at it, um, I just yeah, it's it's tough in the amoeba. Don't worry too much about that. You know, if there's little bits of stuff inside of it, it was a food vacuole, whereas this would just be filled with water, so it's sort of clear inside. Okay, what is this? Well, it's a paramecium, obviously, I guess it says it. It's shaped like a fo footprint. So remember, the paramecium has a shell around it, a pellicle, that um, gives it this distinctive shape. So what do we call A, I guess first paramecium, what do we call all these things on the outside? Julia? Cilia. Let's do these in a little bit different order. What do you call this indentation here? Mm. It's also lined with cilia. Luke? Vacuole? No, not this part. Oh, oh, oh. The hair stuff? No, this like, in, 
indentation. So it was something like a mouth, but I can't remember. It's like the mouth of a paramecium. It's called the oral groove. Oh. Yeah, I remember there was a band. Right. Right. That's yeah. my, my band yeah. I'm forming, yeah. Why did you go to A to C? Because we want to talk, food comes into the oral groove, then travels down this tube. It's called the gullet. And what would be at the end of the gullet? Um, it's not labeled more. here. Yeah, that would be a food vacuole. Oh. The food that's ingested by this term, you see, ends up in a food vacuole. So it can be digested. And again, here you have you know, more food vacuoles that were uh, formed as this paramecium ate. What do you think D is shown in this? Okay. It looks like the ER, maybe? Mm -hmm. or, or the, um, oh, what's it called? I forgot, the stack of pancakes? No, or? not these dark areas. It's actually the nuclei. Oh, um, Paramecium have a macro nucleus, a larger one, and a micro nucleus, a smaller one. Okay. They can actually exchange, two paramecium can exchange micro nuclei in a process called conjugation and exchange some genetic material. What is E? Jackson? Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. Again, because of the pellicle, it's not easy for waste to just move through that <coughs> shell. So it has this little part that's sort of merged with the outside of the paramecium. That's the anal pore for the removal of waste. And then this thing looks like a star or a compass. Uh, <coughs> this is actually what the contractile vacuole looks like in the paramecium and in the euglena. These sort of rays of the star, they actually are little sort of tubes that bring water in to the central area. And then once that central area gets filled up with water, it squeezes and pumps the water out. Right, so let's look at this video. Swim in a corkscrew shape. Oh, they're What? No, that's how they move. They're pretty quick. They're tiny. It's a microscope. Yeah, they're visible. And the microscope. Wow, they're so cute. Oh, thanks. It's not really easy to see this thing uh, actually eating anything, but um, it does. Consumes here. It sort of moves back and forth, ushering in little bits of food into the oral groove. Are we going to watch one of those under my microscope? Yeah. moving there. It's yeah. almost impossible yeah. to see. But it pulls the 
you glean up through the water. Oh, I can yeah. that You can see it sort of waving back and forth very quickly. You can oh, see it there. See it. Okay. Well, and that's what they use to sort of pull oh, up through the water. It. Oh, I can see it's like an antenna. Yeah, it looks kind of like an antenna, maybe. They're so slow. It's like so like I imagine their flagellum would be a lot bigger. Yeah, it's like. What happens if they flagellum? 